Car 51 from Ellington, Connecticut, the Jet Electric Chevrolet for Burt Willett. Felt there was room for improvement. DNFs, we, we had a few DNFs um, that I, we knew we could fix. And if we fixed those and got rid of them, then you know we also had a mid-summer stre stretch where we were we didn't quite have the win, shall we say, but I was like eight or nine top fives in a row at one point mid-season. So we knew if we could get the car to stay together and get everything right, that the makings was there. It felt pretty good. I mean, in, in that first one, we had a motor go sour, you know, and then we went and got a brand new engine and put that in, and you know, of course, had car was right back to its normal, had instant speed. You know, we felt pretty good, and I, and I also had feeling that we could still make improvement in the car um, and only make get better. He moves up, picks up the spot. Berta Wett's car, car 51, is off the pace. The point leader, Bert Ouellette, car is almost to a halt. We had tried making a gear change and it didn't uphold the first time. The rear end wound up letting go. Then we fixed that and we figured out why she let the ghost out. You go roll into the next race going, this needs, you know, you need to mean business. Um, you need to mean business, but you gotta still keep an intelligent level to it because you can't get yourself in a wreck or balled up because now you're digging a hole deeper. I had made a change and got us really close uh, it, it was basically just kind of that fine tuning, just, you know, you kind of know the elements, you know the temperature change, and I can kind of pretty much predict what she's going to give me, you know, and it, it got to a point where actually this year I felt I was making less changes. When you hit that true balance, it just sits so much more consistent. Finishing races, you got to go. It's not a long race, but you got to keep a little thought to it. You can't just hammer. And we'll let car number 51 staying right with Minkler as they exit turn two and race up the back straight away. Yeah, Minkler not getting the same start. That allows Willett to grab the lead. Here comes Burt Willett off of turn number four. Checkered flag is out and his first win of the season here in the street stocks. That was nice and way before it wasn't the second to last race like the year before. You know, and actually that was kind of when I was wanting it, if that makes sense. That, that was probably the coolest thing about that is when I felt it was time to pull that trigger, you know, we were able to pull it. Actually, the week I won was when Travis had that motor blow up on him, you know, and I was running up front when that happened, and when that kind of happened, I said, this has to be the week. I knew I was second in points. I knew that was going to make me a big jump, so I wanted to try to tighten that gap up as much as I could, and it couldn't have happened at a better time. Drops back to position number seven. Gonna single it out, except the battle for third. Gets together in turn number two. Burt Willett to the outside wall. Travis Hydar contact with the right front corner of his car. I know it been stuff in the suspension um, because my steering wheel went instantly moved a lot. So uh, I know the toe or st stuff got bent in the front and then when I would set the bird car into the corner hit the brakes, sometimes it would go right, sometimes it would go left. Win. Whoa, trouble on a turn number four. One car upside down in a big way, coming to the checkered flag for David Mesha. It was pretty crazy. I, you know, I was in hopes, I never thought he was gonna flip. I would kind of thought he would just ride over me, drive off or slide off. And I was hoping to, to be able to finish my race. It was mostly cosmetic. I mean, it added because now I hit the wall for the second time. It only exaggerated the right front damage that I already had from me and Travis from hitting turn one you know, that kind of knocked us off our feet for a week or two, and it took us a couple, unfortunately, probably a week or two too many to kind of really get back to stride. You gotta shake it off. Dwelling in that negativity is not gonna help you move to back to positive weeks. You know, so you kind of just gotta regroup, make sure you go through the car, make sure you got your car right, and just put yourself in the right head, head game going in there and just, just gotta be smart. You know, and we cruised home to another solid second place. We needed this though tonight. We need another good point night. Um, we're in a, a good heated battle with Adrian, uh, trying to get second place in points. It's great to, you know, especially after that hurdle we had gone through and everything, to know that the car's back. So now you just go over it. You have a couple of things you always do in the off season. You know, other than that, it's, you know, you don't have to do much. A lot of positive and a lot of build on. We only had two DNFs. Uh, which compared to the five that I had the year before was a great step in the right direction. I'd still love to get rid of another one of those. And, and, and I thought there was a lot of weeks where we just did a good job just kind of fighting it out. Uh, the biggest one I got to thank is obviously my, our, our fearless leader, my owner, uh, Jason Trott, giving me this opportunity. You know, it means a lot, you know, and his son that's right there with them all the time. You know, appreciate just the whole Jet Motorsports bringing them, bringing me in. and. Kind of making this be my home to a point. Yeah, 
chase, chase that championship. This time, don't be, don't be one shy.